The NFL Draft is still months away, but we should expect nothing other than absolute chaos to ensue that night. I truly don't think anybody is ready for what we may see come draft night. They're saying he might possibly be the best quarterback prospect of all time. Caleb Williams is the headliner for a reason and will be the main focal point for the next few months leading up to the draft. But we might not even see Caleb Williams go first overall, or even top three for that matter. Sounds stupid, right? How could it be that one of the best quarterback prospects to ever come out is dropping in the draft already? Very rarely is it that the best quarterback in the draft doesn't get taken first overall. Since the year 2000, only six players have been drafted first overall that didn't play the quarterback position. This situation is different though. For as touted after as Williams is, there are reports coming out about which teams he doesn't want to be drafted by. So the question is, will Williams actually have a say in where he ends up? And how will that affect the team's drafting within those first few picks? Kanye West said it best. He said no one man should have all that power. But in Caleb's case, he does. The fate of your favorite team's draft selection lies in the hands of no one other than Caleb Williams himself. Because let's get this straight, the draft won't officially start until Caleb Williams is off the board. That's how it always is. A guy that you didn't expect to drops a pick or two, and all of a sudden your team's up and a GM is like, whoa, wait a minute, let's see what we got here. Mike Tyson said that everybody's got a plan until they get punched in the mouth. Well, in this case, everybody's got a plan until the player you thought you were drafting gets taken. In a positive light, we saw a perfect example of this in last year's draft with the Houston Texans. Obviously, the two best quarterbacks in that draft class were Bryce Young and CJ Stroud. Now, I believe that the Texans fell in love with Stroud early in the process, and they were just hoping and praying that the Panthers selected Young instead. Well, they did, and Houston wasted no time selecting Stroud number two, and then D'Amico Ryans and those guys were like, man, let's just go all in. They traded up for the very next pick and drafted Will Anderson at number three. Two picks that would work out tremendously, one of the best drafts we've seen in a while because they went from being a three-win team in 2022 to being just one game away from an AFC Conference Championship this year. Stroud at times this year looked like a top five quarterback in the league, and Will Anderson has a great shot at taking home Defensive Rookie of the Year with his seven sacks on the season. Houston immediately got two cornerstone players that would change the trajectory of their franchise in a matter of minutes in last year's draft. Every team, three and on, had a plan going into the draft until Houston decided to trade up now plans just go out the window and the real fun begins. So could we be seeing something similar happen this year? If Caleb Williams truly doesn't want to get selected by Chicago or Washington, could we actually see him dropping a few picks? Do one of those teams risk it and draft him anyways? I mean, what if another team doesn't want to give up what it will take in order to trade up to a one or two spot in the draft? See, if Williams or his team publicly makes a statement that he doesn't want to play for Chicago or the Commanders, that puts both those organizations in a terrible spot. Because now you have no leverage. Every team willing to trade up for one of those picks knows that you're actually trying to come up off that spot, so now they don't have to give you as much in return. It happened in 1983 with John Elway. He told the Baltimore Colts, look, I'll go play baseball before I ever play for your organization. They drafted him anyways, hoping that he would change his mind, and we obviously know now that he did. They would end up trading him to Denver for no players or picks that would turn out to be of any importance. And the Colts as a franchise wouldn't bounce back for nearly two decades until they were able to draft Peyton Manning first overall in 1998. Eli Manning as well. The Chargers took him and he said absolutely not. And they would end up trading him for Phillip Rivers that same day. And while Rivers probably goes down as the best quarterback in Chargers history, Manning would go on to win two rings in New York. So going back to my question, if Caleb comes out and says it's a no-go for Chicago or Washington, should they still take it? In my opinion, the answer is no, stay far away. History shows us that it never works out the way that you think it will. But the good thing is that there are other great quarterbacks in this draft along with big time playmakers that could be of great value instead of taking Williams. The Bears ultimately still have to decide whether they wanna take Williams with that first pick or keep Justin Fields as the future of their franchise. If Williams says no to Chicago, it makes their decision much easier. Take Marvin Harrison Jr. with that first pick and pair him with DJ Moore and Fields. It's hard for me to imagine a world where a team isn't so thirsty to draft Williams that they don't just say bump it, we don't care, we'll trade the house in order to take it. The Minnesota Vikings are a team that I can see making a huge jump in order to draft Williams or one of these other great quarterback prospects. Kirk Cousins who will be 36 when the season starts and coming off an Achilles injury 
the Vikings have no choice other than to look what their future may hold. You have the best wide receiver in the game in Justin Jefferson, who still needs to get paid. What better time to grab the quarterback of your future than in this draft? Atlanta at 8 with a group of young offensive weapons and a brand new coaching staff will be looking to grab their quarterback of the future since clearly it's not Desmond Ritter. And both Denver and Las Vegas at 12 and 13 respectively look to be just a quarterback away from possibly being playoff contenders. One proven head coach in Sean Payton and some weapons to work with offensively in Denver. And Antonio Pierce in Las Vegas who recently got the interim tag removed and has brought a swagger and an energy to this Raiders organization similar to what we see Dan Campbell building in Detroit. So I take back what I said about Chicago and Washington possibly having no leverage if Caleb comes out and says he doesn't want to play for either organization. There are just way too many teams with quarterback being their number one priority that feel like they're just one piece away from being playoff contenders for somebody not to trade up. I've been vocal about this all season, but the quarterback play this year league round was extremely disappointing. So I look for this draft to help solve some of those problems. Caleb Williams is what people call a generational prospect, a guy that some have even compared to Patrick Mahomes himself. We don't know who yet, but somebody's gonna hit the lottery and take Williams at some point come draft night. Let's just hope that all the hype surrounding him and the chaos that he may cause turns out to be worth it.